Don't talk to me about a 911 call. Don't talk to me about how things are going to go down and you're going to, you know, have a, a, a way to know when it's going to happen because you rubbed your little crystal ball. Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. A couple days ago, I made a community post reaching out to everybody saying, let me know what you think are the three to five biggest mistakes people make when concealed carrying. And I got some great feedback. I, I read each and every comment. Came up with five of which I want to talk about that I believe are big CCW mistakes. So let's get to it. The first one that I think is so vital is that people don't practice enough with their carry gun. We get so used to carrying it every day. It becomes part of our body. It's completely normal for us to carry, but we don't practice with it. And that is a big mistake. That is the very gun that we're potentially going to use for self-defense and we don't practice with it. And I have to remind myself to do that at times. Also, put some fresh ammo in there every now and again. Shoot up your carry ammo. Get rid of it Put some fresh ammo in there. Make sure it feeds, fire, and ejects. Not all self-defense rounds are the same. You look at, although the bullet weight may be the same, but you look at the, the height of your self-defense round. Some handguns may have trouble with that specific round. So practice with it. Use your carry ammo. Know what to expect with it. And you will be more confident with it. And that's really what we're looking for confidence not just in the carry but in the the shooting accuracy and how well it performs with us behind the trigger many people get the perfect carry gun for them they practice with it but they have crap gear and we'll start with the belt the the flimsy belt won't cut it once you carry with a gun belt you will you will not go back it's thicker it keeps the holster and the gun more close to the body it's easier here's one by we the people here's a dress up belt that is a gun belt i only wear gun belts here's more of a battle belt all right core essentials makes a great belt it's got quarter inch adjustments here's one by vetter they're all over the place to get a good belt is i think pretty essential but even more important than that is a good holster here's a leather holster fits nice and snug with the pistol here we have a kydex holster fits nice and snug with the pistol one that's made specifically for that gun these cheap phobus holsters i don't like them it'll get you to the point until you get a better holster but it's really not that good and these flimsy things you spend all this money on carry ammo the perfect gun maybe changing out the sights or the trigger and you put it in something like this, all flimsy, total garbage. Use these for transporting your gun so you don't scratch it in the range bag or anything else, but you have to up your gear if you're gonna be serious about concealed carry. Many years ago, I was talking to a former police officer who was working at a gun store and we talked about keeping a round in the chamber. And his philosophy was pretty simple. He said, if you're not going to keep a round in the chamber, then just leave your gun at home. You're wasting your time. And since then, I've studied the issue. I have always carried a round in the chamber because I have seen so many videos. I have talked to too many people. And when seconds count, that additional step, when stress is kicked in, makes your whole defensive situation more difficult. Have a good holster, have a good belt, have a good carry system, but carry a round in the chamber. I do that with all my carry guns. I wouldn't even consider without a round in the chamber. Now, I know this is something that beginning people that carry, beginners, should I say, they they struggle with this. They're, they're always worried about a negligent discharge and everything. Work through that. Get through that. Work with a good holster. Put it in a good kydex or leather holster and try as hard as you can with an unloaded firearm to try to manipulate that trigger it won't happen if it's a specific holster for that handgun so carry around in the chamber that's my advice i know a lot of people feel strange about that if you if you're one of the ones to feel strange about it get one with a thumb safety specifically for me i don't do that but i know a lot of people it's it's a comfort level and I, I hate the word comfort because it sounds so woke but it's important 
And when you study the issue, you will see that when seconds matter, that additional step could be the difference between life and death. When people begin carrying, they have all these ideas, and that's just what they are, ideas. I recommend that they talk to somebody that's been doing it a while because these ideas are many times outright psychotic. Like They just have this scenario of how things are going to go down and they're going to react this way. I hear some people say, I'm going with the 1911. Now, if you've been carrying a long time and you carry a 1911, great. You, you have that experience. I think that's excellent. For a beginner, within a week, they're going to leave this at home. It's going to be too cumbersome. To the opposite effect, I hear people say, I want the smallest and lightest weight gun. I don't want to have to worry about it because all I need to do is shoot from here to five feet away because that's where most self-defense situations take place. I have an issue with that. You can't decide how most self-defense situations are going to take place for you. You can't decide that. The criminal decides that. You can't decide when it's going to happen or how far away they're going to be. The criminal decides that. They're not going to make an appointment with you and you're not going to know their schedule, although they may know yours. So to be proficient and you choose the wrong gun is going to be tough. Choosing the right gun, something in my estimation is a midsize, something that has decent magazine capacity, but it's comfortable enough to carry and when you carry it and you sh you've shot it you gain that confidence to take this to the range and expect to shoot holes into holes is unrealistic choosing the right carry gun and the right carry system i don't think ankle carry is a good primary way to carry a firearm i think it's a poor choice except when you're in the vehicle for a long time. You can retrieve that rather quickly. But outside of that, and, and also for a backup gun, I think it's great. But for a primary carry in the ankle, or people have these ideas, I'll just wear a shoulder holster because they saw some detective show where they were wearing shoulder holsters. We have to talk to these people and help them out because they have no clue. They have these ideas, and it becomes their reality. And their reality is false. You have to choose the right carry position. I carry four o'clock right here. Been doing it for years. You have to have the right firearm, and you have to practice with number five. I only carry when I go to a place where I feel like I could be in danger. Come on, man. You, the chances are not going to happen that you're going to need your gun everywhere. I just, ugh, it makes me so mad. You know, if you're going to carry, carry every day. And I model this every day. Why do I carry every day and why should you? Because there are people in your life that depend on you for protection. Your family depends on you for protection. Don't talk to me about a 911 call. Don't talk to me about how things are going to go down and you're going to, you know, have a, a, a way to know when it's going to happen because you rubbed your little crystal ball and came up with the way it's going to happen. Give me a break. We're talking self-defense here. We're talking uh, an essential part of your life. We're talking about a dangerous society out there. You don't want to be the one in front of the news camera saying, well, things like this never happen around here. I can't believe it. It's just such a quiet neighborhood. We look after each other. Well, where were you? Where were you when it happened? Because you decided it wasn't important enough? You know, so you're just going to carry where you think that there may be something going on. All of a sudden, you're going to turn into Rambo or John Wick and, and be the one to save the day when you lack that everyday carry experience. It makes no sense to me. So if you're going to be committed, be all in. Carry every day. Carry where you go. If you ever drive by and see me mowing my lawn, you're not going to see the gun. I see CW, but I have a gun. Why? Am I paranoid? No, I'm cautious. And I understand that it could be a dangerous world out there. And a dangerous world means we need to protect ourselves and our families. And people are depending on you once again. So don't be that guy. Don't be the guy that, that's going to pretend like you, you're going to prophesy how things are going to work in your life in terms of self-defense. It's not going to happen that way. I guarantee you, all you have to do is talk to people who have been in these scenarios and they will tell you everything happened so fast. I was either prepared or I wasn't prepared. Thank goodness I'm alive today because it got very scary. CCW is a passion of mine. It's something that I, I exercise every day. I encourage people when they have these crazy ideas or they 
they come up with these certain situations, how things are going to go down. That's when mistakes happen. And so if we have the right gear, the right gun, the right holster, the right carry position, and we practice with that carry gun and we have the right ammo, we will be in a far better prepared situation in case we have to use our gun. And that is the reason why we decided to carry in the first place. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.